Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com, where I hope you design smarter, not harder. But learning Photoshop can be a whole lot to take in, and it never really gets easier. There's always going to be those small, minuscule ways that you find out about way later that can help you improve your workflow and ultimately make you a better and faster designer. So here's eight quick tips for Photoshop that I want to share with you. Okay, let's just get into it. So number one, I actually posted an Instagram reel about this and I'm really surprised more people didn't know about this. So layer styles are based on pixel values and can look different across different document and text and layer sizes. But you can actually resize your layer styles on a percentage basis. Let's check it out. So I have this example graphic here. And as you can see, this is the same text with the same layer style at just three different sizes, one small, one medium, and one big. And if I zoom in here, we can see that the layer style just looks different across these different text sizes. So on the smaller one, the bevel and emboss is a lot more prominent and all the inner shadows and everything pretty much about this is just swallowing up the text. And as we get bigger, we see that this layer style fits the text a bit more aptly, especially at this large size. So what do you do if you have a small piece of text like this that has a layer style in it that just doesn't look good at its size? We can actually just resize all the pixel values of the layer styles on a percentage basis. So I'll show you how to do that right here. I'll go into this example and click on the really small text here. And all I have to do is right click on the actual effects icon. And once I right click, that'll bring up all the effects options. Just go down to scale effects. From here, you could choose the scale of all the layer styles. So if I turn this to something like 40, we can see that the layer style now takes on a much smaller role. It's not swallowing up all the text and it just looks better overall. So if I'm working with a smaller piece of text and I wanna use this layer style, I'd have to scale the layer effects to match the size of the text. So here's an example with the same layer style on the same three pieces of text. All I did between these three text layers was scale the layer style at different sizes. So this is scaled all the way up. This is scaled sort of on a medium level and this is scaled on a small level. So we can see just how much the size of the layer style changes how it looks and affects the text or the layer that it's working on. Okay, speaking of layer styles, let's move on to tip number two. So when you're working with layer styles between layers, you can actually alt click and drag and drop the effects or the layer style onto another layer or the individual layer styles of that layer onto another layer. This is something that I learned way too late, but if you just hold down all on your keyboard, and drag the effects onto another layer, you have effectively copied that layer style onto that layer. And you can also do that with individual effects. So if I wanted to drag just the color overlay or the stroke, for example, I'll just alt click hold and click on the color overlay and drag that over to my other layer. And now I've just copied that singular effect onto that new text layer. I can do that with any effect that I want, like the stroke here, super simple. And in case you don't wanna copy it, you just wanna move it. You just don't hold down Alt on your keyboard, just drag these layer styles to wherever as you wish. And while we're at it, actually, the Alt click to duplicate is pretty universal within Photoshop. So if you wanna duplicate a layer really quickly, all you have to do again is hold down Alt on your keyboard, click and drag that layer onto its own new layer. And now you have another duplicate of that layer. You can do that in the layers panel or you can do that in the canvas. So if I just hold on Alt and click on this layer and drag it wherever I want, it's going to create a duplicate of that layer wherever I place it. You can also do this with smart objects and the effects that you apply to smart objects. So I have these two layers here, which are the same image, but the bottom one here is a bunch of effects applied to it through a smart object. So if I just go into the actual smart filters of that smart object, I can all click and drag that to another smart object. It's going to copy that effect onto that other smart object. So as you can see, now we have the same exact effect layout on both of these layers and all we have to do was alt click and drag those smart filters to another smart object. So that's just a quick one that might speed up your workflow. So let's check out tip number three and you might wanna look away if you have PTSD, but if you're ever working within Photoshop, if you're a designer at all actually, you have definitely gotten this error at least once or twice or a billion times when working on a project. And it just makes you wanna pull your hair out Sometimes you can't even save your document because of this error. So if you wanna clear up some space really quickly to free up your RAM and your memory so that you don't get this error immediately when you try to save or do whatever command you're trying to do, you can pretty much purge your Photoshop memory. So that means your clipboard and whatever else you have stored in your RAM, like your Control Z or your document history and whatnot. So just go into edit, purge, and then choose all. And it's gonna give you this warning, of course. But if you're at this point in your, uh, in your project where you're getting this error, you don't really care about anything else. You just wanna never see this error again. So just click OK, and that's gonna clear up some disk and memory space, so you could do whatever you're trying to do. Just remember, once you click OK, all your history in this document is gone, so you can't do Control-Z anymore, or you can, just not 
uh, whatever you had previous to clicking OK. But either way, this should help you get rid of that error, at least temporarily. If it doesn't, you can also try other things like closing other Photoshop documents you may have open or any other applications you may have open that you're not using, like Google Chrome especially eats up your RAM, Adobe Illustrator, any Adobe products, things like that. So that'll give you some leg room around this error. But alternatively, you can just do what I do and get a entire hard drive dedicated to fixing this error because I used to get this all the time. So I have a hard drive that's mostly empty. It's just got some stuff backed up in there and I could set that to my scratch disk in my settings by going to command K or control K if you're on Windows to open up my Photoshop settings or my preferences. And then down in scratch disk, you can choose which hard drive you want to be your scratch disk. So as you can see, this hard drive that I have set to number one has a lot more free space than my actual computer does. So I pretty much have never gotten that error ever since I started doing this. Just invest in a hard drive Thank me later. Okay, tip number four. When you're trying to select a perfect circle out of an image and mask that out of the image, it could be tough to get the right selection unless you use this method. So I have this image of like some sci-fi artwork here and I want to select out this planet Earth. All I have to do is drag a guide from my ruler. By the way, if you don't see your rulers, it's just command or control R on your keyboard, but drag a ruler to the leftmost point of that circle and then drag another ruler to the topmost point of that circle. Then simply grab your elliptical marquee tool Place your cursor at the intersection of these two rulers, hold down shift and just drag down to the right. And from here you can drag out the perfect selection for this circle and you can just make that a layer mask on that layer and boom, now you have that perfectly selected sphere or circle within your document that you can use anywhere you want. Okay, number five, I need you to stop using grain or noise from filter, noise, add noise. It's ugly, I'm sorry, there's way better ways to do this. When I'm using the noise from filter, add noise, we can zoom in here and see just how harsh this grain gets, and this is really bad for compression. It also just doesn't apply the noise in a tasteful way once you go up on the amount. So this is just at 47%, and once I zoom in, we can see just how ugly this noise gets. Again, really harsh, and it's at a really small scale, especially if you're using a 300 dpi document. And there are absolutely no parameters to choose the scale or the roughness or whatever. So instead, what we could do is make a new layer. So go here, click a new layer, and do shift backspace on our keyboard, and then I'll bring up the fill panel. Choose the contents to be 50% gray. Press OK on that. Then go up to filter, camera raw filter. Go down to the effects panel within camera raw filter. And here you have this little grain option. Just crank that all the way up. And within this, you can play with the size or the roughness of the grain and just choose something to your liking. It's a lot nicer to have these parameters here, especially the size and the roughness too. Camera raw filter grain is just superior in my opinion. So once you found a nice spot for your grain, just click OK and set this layer to overlay. You can see that is a much nicer grain and noise on our image. It's a lot less harsh and it's also non-destructive. So this is just a gray layer on top of all the other layers. So if I wanted to turn the noise off, all I have to do is hide this layer. And not only that, since this is just a gray layer that you could put wherever you want, it's going to affect all the layers below it. You can do any compositing or whatever you want on the images below and still have that grain perfectly intact all the way on top of your document. Another cool tip within this tip is maybe you want something more interesting than noise and you want to set that to overlay to get the texture onto your artwork or your composite or whatever you're making. What you can do is drag pretty much whatever texture you want, like one of these textures from my Age Photocopy Texture Kit, which is available on my website, by the way. But anyway, I'll drag one of these in here. So I just want to isolate the texture of this, sort of like how we did with the noise just now. I just want the raw texture sort of interacting with the layers and image below it. The first thing I'll do is actually desaturate this because it is a greenish tint right now. So I'll do Command U on my keyboard and just drag the saturation all the way down. And if I set this layer to overlay, it's going to darken the image a bit since it is a darker layer. The closer we can get our texture to a neutral or 50% gray means it won't brighten or darken up the layers beneath so to do that I'll just do command L on the keyboard to bring up the levels panel and I want to bring this midtone slider into the middle of the Gaussian distribution in our histogram here you sort of have to eyeball this but this is going to get it pretty close to a neutral or 50% gray and once you press OK and then we can see that we have this texture pretty much ingrained into the image or layers below it and again this is just a texture on top of all of our layers so I could do whatever compositing or whatever I want in the layers below and still have this texture and grainy photocopy look all the way on top interacting with pretty much anything we put below it. And as we can see, since I set that to a neutral gray, it's not making the image any darker or any brighter. Number six, you can align multiple layers to spots on your canvas or within a selection using these align controls up here. So say I wanna place this text perfectly in the center of this rectangle. All I have to do is grab a selection of this rectangle by holding down command on my keyboard and clicking on the layer thumbnail 
of the rectangle and that's going to give us a selection of that rectangle then i'll select both the rectangle layer and the text layer by holding down shift and clicking on both of them and then if i go up here to our align controls i can align it to the vertical center of that selection and then the horizontal center of that selection you can of course also do this to the leftmost point the top of it the bottom of it and the right side of the rectangle so this may seem like a small one but i actually use this tip a lot for example if i want to center something in the middle of my canvas really quickly all i do is command a on my keyboard to select everything and then i use these align controls up here to center it to the vertical center and the horizontal center so that's just a way better way of centering things whether it's to the canvas or to a selection of another layer all right number seven you may or may not know this one but here are some fun keyboard shortcuts that you can use when you're making a selection so if you're using any kind of selection tool say the rectangle Tangular marquee or the polygonal lasso or any selection tool. I'll make my first selection here. If I hold down shift while I select, I can add another piece to this live selection. If I hold down alt, I can take away from that selection. And if I hold down both shift and alt, it will let you select an intersection of that previous selection. Also, when you click and drag a selection, it simply just moves your selection box. But if you hold down command and drag that selection, it will actually cut that selection out from the layer and let you move that cutout piece wherever you want to rather than moving the actual selection. And we can combine a tip from earlier like holding down alt. So if I hold down both command and alt, it will drag a cut copy of that selection to anywhere I want on my canvas. Okay, finally, tip number eight. This is actually a few tips regarding layer masks. So when you're working with layer masks, you can actually hold down shift and click on the layer mask to disable it really quickly. So if you wanna just see what that layer looks like without the layer mask selection, or if you're not sure if you wanna layer mask out that part of the layer yet, you can hold down shift, click on it, and disable that layer mask for the time being. And if you wanna turn it on again, you just do the same thing. Hold down shift and click on that layer mask to enable it once again. And you can also view the actual layer mask by holding down alt and clicking on that layer mask. And now we can see the canvas takes up the form of the layer mask so if I wanted to get a really close look at what I'm doing in the layer mask or see the effects that I might do to it, I can hold down alt, click on that layer mask, and now I can see that projected onto my canvas. This also helps if you're trying to paste or copy something within your layer mask to actually work with it on your canvas. And on top of this, you can actually apply effects, like I just said, to just the layer mask of a layer. So let's say I wanted to turn the soft fade of this layer mask into a more grungy fade. I can click on that layer mask and I'll hold down alt and click on it so I can actually see what I'm doing. And I can use any filter I want on here. So I could put some noise on here, some grain, or I could go into filter, filter gallery, and add a little grain effect and put a stamp on top of that. And now I turn that soft brush fade into a more grainy and dithered fade. So I'll press OK on this filter gallery effect and I'll click back on our actual layer to view what we're working with. And now we have a grainy fade on this photo. But now if I wanna move this grainy fade to the left a bit more towards this logo, I could try clicking on the layer mask and just moving that. That's gonna move both the layer and the layer mask. If I wanna move just the layer mask, all I have to do is click on this link here and that's gonna unlink the layer mask with the layer. So now I could click on just the layer mask and drag just the layer mask more towards the left to get the layer mask to sort of align with the logo here while keeping the actual layer or the placement of the layer fully intact. Just make sure to go back in and click that link again so that you don't make any mistakes when say you're moving the group or whatever because if you're moving a group and it has an unlinked layer mask in it, the layer mask is actually gonna keep its place. I'll show you that right now. If I unlink this and I move the group, the layer mask stays in its place. So just make sure to go back in and click that link again once you're done moving the layer mask. All right, boom, look at that. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, and that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed these quick tips and I really hope you learned something. These are just small things that I found helped me improve my efficiency and skill set as a designer over the last couple of years. It's really just the little things that can help you improve a lot in the long run. So I hope you found this useful. If you like this video, like the video. If you like me, subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.